This is my 24-year-old Range Rover P38, which was left abandoned here on the rural coast of West Island for over five years, and I'm bringing it back to its former glory, one video at a time. Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Sam's Motoring Machine. Although you'll see it's looking pretty cloudy behind me today, summer has actually arrived in Ireland now finally and that means it's a great day to get stuck into the P38 and do some more jobs on it. In the last episode you will have seen me guys fix that crankshaft damper that was making that horrible noise. We fitted a new alternator, we fitted a new water pump, a new belt and we got the engine sounding a lot better. However, when I was trying to fill the coolant back up again after doing that work, it was behaving quite weirdly. It was throwing extra coolant out of the header tank. It was temperature gauge was fluctuating up and down um, and basically not acting like it was bled properly. Uh, now these P38 2.5 diesels are pretty difficult to bleed, they're notoriously difficult actually, but hopefully by using the right technique we'll be able to get this system bled up and the temperature gauge should be nice and steady in the middle then. And then once that's done we can start moving on to other problems. So as these cars are so notoriously difficult to bleed and get all the air out of that cooling system, I thought I'd make it easier on myself and get one of these, which I've never had before but I've always wanted to get. So some of you guys might know what this is, this is a coolant filling kit, um, it's more than just a funnel, basically this allows you to have a head of uh, coolant pressure above the normal header tank, so it just helps to push the coolant through the system and helps in getting all the air out of it as well, so we'll have a go at using this um, and see if it's any good. If it is, I'll put a link in the description down below for Amazon where you guys can get one. And the first thing we're going to do is actually to drain the old coolant out, so we're going to get every, as much of it out as we possibly can. Now there are actually two drain points on the P38 diesel, one at the bottom of the radiator and one on the side of the block. Um, so using both of those we should be able to get 99% of the coolant out of the system, which will be good because then we can just start afresh with nice fresh new coolant. So let's see if we can find those bungs. So we've got the GoPro here to show you guys. Bottom of the radiator. And there we go, that's our plastic bung we've got to try and get out to get most of the coolant out of the radiator. Um, that might be difficult to remove. If any of you guys have old 200 or 300 discoveries, uh, or defenders even, you might remember these plastic bungs on your cooling system um, that are a pain in the ass to remove. So hopefully it comes out. So a 21mm six-sided socket is a good fit for that uh, bung. You don't want to use a 12-sided socket on it because you're going to round it off pretty much straight away. So six-sided socket only. Right, let's get our drain tub underneath. Nice. All right, let's take off the header tank cap to make it a bit easier it to drain. There we go. Looks like a lot of water which is obviously because I put some in last week and quite a bit of rust as well. So yeah probably a good thing we're changing it out. So whilst that bung's out we're just gonna give it a quick flush through by just running some water through the header tank just to get out any nasties that might be in there. It's still coming out fairly sort of orangey looking so we'll keep going so the next thing I'm going to do whilst that continues to drain is to pull off this bleed hose on top of the radiator uh, this is quite a key part of the cooling system on the P38 diesel so we're going to pull it off and then we're actually going to try and blow through it with a bit of water just to flush anything out that might be stuck in there if this bleed hose does get blocked um, it can cause all kinds of issues with the system not being able to de-aerate so yeah, we're going to make sure that's nice and clear. Yeah, I've got to be careful of the little plastic connector on top of the uh, top of the radiator there. They can easily break off. So we're going to pop that over there. And you can see it's bubbling up in the uh, header tank there. So. 
fairly happy that that is nice and clear. So while that just finishes off draining, we're going to start setting up the filling funnel, getting it attached to the header tank with the right adapters. So this comes with lots of different size adapters that should fit most header tanks. So hopefully we've got something in here that will uh, that will do do the trick. Let's tip these out into the box. So as you guys can see, it comes with quite a few different bits, different caps, different connectors uh, to hopefully fit all different vehicles. So I guess we'll start by finding something with the right thread, which that looks. Yep, so that's the right type of cap for the system. So it looks like that might be the right central seal. Whether it's going to be that one or this one. There we go. So that's quite a good fit. So it's pressing down that rubber seal into the neck of the expansion tank so that seals nicely. And then the cap is just pressing it down nicely. So that's what you want. So next you can just put the funnel straight on top which kind of suits us for this application but they do give you some extensions as well so if you wanted to get a lot of head on the system you could go all the way up there like that we could try that for a start anyway also inside the funnel itself is actually like a plug that you can control with this handle so you can stop the flow of coolant into the system just by putting this handle in um, so once the system's full you don't have to waste any coolant by spilling it so anything that's left in here you can just tip back into your container Okay, so that's stopped dripping now. We're going to put our plug back into the bottom of the radiator and then we'll start filling up and see if we can get it to bleed up nicely. So the coolant we're going to use is this. Uh, it's a concentrated uh, one by Manol, uh, just some reasonably cheap stuff actually. Um, and this is got an orange coolant in colour and it is crucially silicated OAT. So um, this, is, this is suitable for engines like the BMW which has a mixture of alloy and iron. We're going to mix this with water at a ratio of about four to one. So I'm going to use an old screen wash bottle to do that. I'm going to pre-mix it before I put it in. And I've got the uh, bleed hose disconnected here and I can actually hear air rushing out of it as the coolant takes its place so that's why that's important to disconnect okay let's make another batch so the idea with this funnel is we'll keep filling it until the header tank is completely full and then we'll fill this funnel until it's about halfway full so that when we start the engine, there's a head of pressure built up on the system, which is going to help force air out of it. So once the system starts to circulate that coolant, all of the air will be pushed out, hopefully. That's the plan anyway. So you can see the level was pretty much stabilised on our funnel there now. Um, so the next stage is going to be to start it up and let the engine draw around that coolant, hopefully expel all that air. But even though I've replaced the alternator on the Range Rover, as you guys would have seen uh, in the last video, the battery still hasn't had a good charge, like the engine's not been running long enough to give it a proper charge to start it up again, so um, we're going to need to give it a bit of help. And thankfully Top Don have sent me this awesome JS2000 jump pack, which everyone knows what these are by now, they're pretty commonplace, but Top Don have made a pretty good one here in the JS2000. Uh, 2000 I guess means 2000 cold cranking amps, so uh, yeah, pretty beefy. So all we're going to do is get that out of the way, pop our jump leads in at the top here, also got some nice USB ports there, which you can use for charging your phone or whatever. Whack our leads on. Make sure we've got a good connection. And then see if she'll crank. Straight up, no bother.
squeeze the hoses to help it push the air out of the system. You can see that level is dropping nicely. Pull this off as well, just let it spit some air out of there if it needs. Now that she's idling away there nicely, sounding really nice after we did that uh, crank damper. Um, so let the engine warm up to thermostat temperature. So the thermostat will open, and then that will let the coolant flow completely around the system. Hopefully, that should do it in terms of bleeding. So whilst it was idling away there, I have noticed, unfortunately, we've got a bit of a leak. If you guys can see that down there. Hopefully you guys can see it, but there's a steel pipe there which goes to the heater uh, core which is dripping. I think it's leaking from the steel pipe itself. Um, yeah. I said there's a pinhole in that, in that pipe, so we'll have to see if we can get that off, unfortunately. So it looks like that steel heater supply pipe down there has got a pinhole in it. Um, from rust so looks like we're gonna have to pull that hose off now and see if there's any way it can be fixed which is a bit annoying because we're probably gonna lose a fair bit of our new coolant we've put in but it's the way it goes sometimes anyway let's give it a go finding an extra job on the project car is always disappointing unlike our sponsor for today's video Skillshare if you're interested in making a career change or upleveling your skills in your current role, Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers and entrepreneurs alike to help you learn new skills to support your growing side hustle. Or you could launch into a totally new career with classes covering pretty much every skill you can imagine. As a mechanical engineer, SolidWorks is part of my bread and butter. But that doesn't mean it's not good to brush up on my skills every now and then. And this SolidWorks class that I found by Tay Sear covers everything right from the basics up to a fairly advanced level. It'd be great if you wanted to start getting into 3D design or wanted to be able to design your own parts and products. So if you fancy yourself as a budding engineer or you have any other skill you'd like to try out, the first 1,000 people to use the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So the hose that's leaking is this one that goes into the heater matrix there. So we're going to take off this clip here, pull it off, and hopefully that'll make it a bit easier to get at this one down here. Um, we might end up having to take it off on the cylinder head side over there and then pull the whole lot out. It's probably going to be the best way to do it. So a bit difficult to show you guys, but the pipe comes around the back of the head and then terminates on the cylinder head under here. I can just about feel it. Um, so, what have we got on there? Is it a clip or is it a Jubilee clip? I mean, a spring clip or a, or a proper worm drive. It feels like a, what is that? Spring clip. So I managed to pull that connection off on the head on that side, um, as you guys can hear. We're losing a lot of our fresh coolant, which is really annoying. I kind of wish I'd seen this last week when I just had water in the system, but there you go. Anyway, this should be now free, apart from a clip on the back of the engine. So, let's see if we can get it out of that and pull it out. Okay, I think we're finally about to get him out. Ended up dragging the... Uh, positive battery cable with it because it's kind of clipped onto it annoyingly so we can disconnect that little clip now there we go 
So this is our problem. Now it was in here like this and I saw the leak down on this corner somewhere, but the whole pipe isn't looking too clever to be fair. So it's probably a little pinhole somewhere. Underneath all this rusty paint. So hopefully you guys can see that, but there, just at the end of my thumb, is a little pinhole, which is causing a leak when the uh, system's under pressure. So we might be able to get away with just chucking a tack of weld on there. Um, I wish I had my TIG welder here because it would be really easy with that, but even with the old stick welder, if I turn it down low enough, we might just be able to zap it really quick and seal it up. Um, and hopefully that's the only hole on the thing. Anyway, we've got nothing to lose, so I say we give it a go. Well, sort of as expected with a crappy stick welder, um, this went pretty terribly. As you guys can see, we start with the pinhole, we've now got a huge hole. Um, it's just because this is so thin, it's rusted away from the inside, there's almost no metal left on this pipe. So um, yeah, gonna have to order, order another one of these, get it fitted. We'll, we'll order new heater hoses all around while we're at it, so. Two weeks later. So it's been a couple of weeks now, and as you guys saw from my disastrous welding attempt on that pipe, uh, I had to capitulate and order some parts, uh, and I got them from Rimmer Bros in the UK. Um, so we've got a big box of bits here. A lot of this stuff is to do with the brake system, which we're going to be tucking into in the next few weeks. But the main thing I needed from this order was this genuine Land Rover, I might add, heater hose pipe. Um, and I really don't want to tell you how much this was. <laughs> Hello, darkness, um, anyway, it's the correct part for the car um, and I like to do things properly when I'm working on these cars so it's good to have the right parts. Um, as an aside, you can't actually get this in anything but uh, genuine Land Rover at the moment. For some reason there's no other alternatives, no brick part, all makes, that kind of thing. So anyway, we got it. To go along with it, I picked up the two hoses that go on each end of this pipe as well so we might as well I thought we might as well replace those as well these were pennies in comparison a couple of euros each um, so we're going to throw all of this on chuck some coolant back in it and then hopefully she bleeds up all right and starts cooling the engine properly let's have a go Hey, so that's both those new hoses and that new pipe back in place. Bit of a fiddly job actually, probably the most fiddly thing I've done on this yet so far, uh, just because of the way that the pipe is rooted behind the head of the engine. Um, and this end here is hidden under the inlet manifold. So definitely would be a lot easier to do if you took this inlet manifold off, but I didn't fancy doing that. So I struggled for about 15 minutes trying to get that hose back on, but it's on now. So. Hose is back on. Next thing we're going to do is top it back up with coolant again. This time hopefully we won't have any leaks. And then we're going to see if she comes up to temperature okay. Being bled properly this time. Using that tool that I showed you guys a couple of weeks back. Well, it's about five minutes ago for you guys. Um, and then, yeah, hopefully she stays cool. I think we used this guy last time. So you guys hopefully see there's a bit of uh, air and coolant squirting out of this bubble now, out of this uh, little bleed off hose. Once that stops bubbling and it's squirting solid coolant, I'll pop it back on, but you can hear there's a lot of air coming out of the system already. So let's give it a go. See if it can start this old two and a half diesel Give it the best chance it's got with a bit of glow plug. These old two and a half diesels love their glow plugs. And here we go. Can't complain at that. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to take the, uh, the funnel off now. So I'll put our plug back in. Seal that up. Come off the cold mark already. Hopefully, shouldn't be too long. It should be up to full temp. Pretty impressed with this top down actually, to be fair. Did the job. The battery was completely dead on the Range Rover, as I said. Um, so yeah, no mean feat. It's only a 2.5 uh, you know, litre engine, but they're notoriously hard to start, those old BMW diesels. And they, uh, they like a bit of juice on startup. So yeah, definitely a good, good first try there on the old Range Rover. Comes in this nice storage box as well. Means you can tuck it all away, and not worry about it. So yeah, there you go. If you guys want one of these, there's a link down in the description below. I think there's a discount code as well. Check the description and uh, yeah, top on JS2000. Nice bit of kit. It's been about 10 minutes. We're slowly coming up to temperature, about a third now, coming up to half. And uh, so far so good. The reason I was a bit concerned about this before um, was that when I tried starting the car and running it for a while before, the top hose got really, really hard um, and it started throwing coolant out of the header tank. Now, some of you guys who know cars and play around with cars might know that's not really a very good sign. Um, so I was kind of suspecting we might have a head gasket problem. But I also know that that can be caused when you've got an airlock in the cooling system. And considering we had a leak on that uh, heater pipe, um, it's entirely possible we had one before. So. Um, I'm hoping that's all it was, and that once this comes up to temperature and holds steady in the middle, we should be able to call it good and crack on with something else. But yeah, so far, so good. She's been idling now for a good 20, 30 minutes. So far, so good. I've had to just top up the header tank a little bit more as it drops a little bit whilst it's idling. Um, but so far, the temperature gauge has just come up to just below halfway and it's sitting there, so yeah. Top hose, hot, fairly hot on this side, not too bad, and pretty cool on this side. So yeah, radiator's doing its thing. And there's not too much pressure in there either, which is always good. So now that I'm reasonably happy with the cooling system on the Range Rover, and it's not gonna boil itself over every time I try and start it up, the next thing we're gonna look at is actually gonna be the air suspension system on the Range Rover. But that is unfortunately gonna to have to wait until the next episode, as this one is already more than long enough for one session. I'd like to say another big thanks to Skillshare once again for sponsoring the video. It really helps out with buying parts for projects like this, and it means I can continue to make these types of videos for you guys in the future. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.